You may have previously worked with the GraphQL code generator to generate types and all of the different client hooks for your front end. In a recent update with the GraphQL code generator, it changed how it works with the configuration and instead focuses on generating the type document node using a new client preset. To get started, let's install some dev dependencies. We'll first want to install the GraphQL code gen CLI and the GraphQL code gen client preset. Once this is installed, we can also install GraphQL. And now that's done, let's now move on over to creating a new file in the root of our project. The GraphQL code gen does come with a net command that you can run to automatically generate this file, but for the purposes of this video, we'll just go through creating this file manually. And for the eagle eye, you probably noticed that this file now ends in .ts. So this means we can import the GraphQL code gen config from the GraphQL code gen CLI package. Then we can generate a new config object and we can specify the type here as code gen config. Finally, we'll export that default config object from this file. Next, we'll want to specify the schema for our GraphQL API. And for the purposes of this video, we'll use an API URL for our GraphQL API. If your schema introspection is protected by some kind of API key, you can provide to the schema here a object where the key is the URL, and then you can provide the headers inside of here. But for the purposes of this video, we'll provide the unprotected URL for our GraphQL API. Then we'll need to provide the documents glob. And here, this will specify that we want to watch for any file inside of the directory app instead of any folder. And we only want to watch files that end in the extension TS or TSX. If you're still working with JavaScript, obviously you can provide those extensions here. And because we haven't worked with the GraphQL code generator before in this new format, and we haven't used the functions that it exports to generate queries, we'll want to ignore no documents. So we can set this as true. And finally, similar to how we've done in the past, we can provide all of the different things that the GraphQL code generator will generate. So here we can provide the key generates, and inside of this object, we'll generate the folder GQL. And for this, we can provide some configuration and we'll specify that the preset here is the new client preset. And you can also provide some plugins, but we'll just provide an empty array for this. Let's save that configuration and back inside of our package JSON, we'll add a new script now to run the code gen. So we'll invoke GraphQL code gen and we'll pass an additional watch flag for this. Now, if we open the terminal and run npm run code gen, this will constantly listen for any new changes inside of our app directory and generate a new folder or file inside of the folder GQL. This will watch for any changes inside of our app directory and it will update the folder GQL that it's now created inside of the root of our project. If we open these files here, we can see inside of the graphql.ts file that it has all of the types from our GraphQL API that we specified inside of the code gen config. So already we've got some types for our GraphQL API, but we next want to generate the types for all of the operations that we have throughout our application. We next want to generate types for GraphQL operations that happen throughout our application. Let's imagine for this video that this client.ts file is your application for your front end. It could be a React app, a Vue app, it really doesn't matter. What we want to do is import GraphQL from the GQL directory. And using that GraphQL function, we can now generate a new query. And we'll call this get cart by ID document. Then instead of here, we can provide the query get cart by ID. As soon as we save this, we should see in the terminal that the GraphQL code generator has noticed some changes. Now, if we go back to our gql.ts file, we should see here instead of our documents object that we have that new string that contains the query. And we can see here for the key inside of here that it contains the query that we've written inside of the client.ts file. Then for the value, we have our types.getCartById document. Now, if we open the GraphQL file and we scroll to the bottom of this file, we should see here that we have a document, get caught by ID document, which is a document node. And then further above, we have both the query and the variables for that query. Now, if we go back to the client and we update this query to include the unit total formatted amount and we save, the GraphQL code generator will notice these changes and it will update the query here. So hopefully this has given you enough to get started generating types for all of your different GraphQL documents throughout your application. We'll explore working with these types and the type document nodes instead of our client applications in another video.